And I have decided that I will be attaining the World Championships again this year. Hello, my name is Caitlin and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to be telling you about how I have been training for the upcoming World Pole Sports Championships so far. For those of you that don't know me, I am a competitive parapole athlete. Back in 2016, I suffered from a spinal cord injury that left me with incomplete quadriplegia. I actually sustained my injury in a pole class, but that didn't stop me from going back when I got out of hospital and I started training again and competing, working my way up to competing on an international level. I've actually competed at the World Pole Sports Championships uh, three times. Yeah, three times before. Once was online during COVID, but my first time was back in 2019. I went to Montreal in Canada, where I placed second in my division. I then had online in 2021, where I came first in my division. And then last year, 2022, we went to Switzerland, Lausanne, where I placed first and I broke the world record for my category. This year I competed at the South African National Pole and Aerial Sports Championships on the 6th of May, where I qualified for the World Championships with a pretty decent score, not quite uh, back to my same world record that I set last year, but pretty decent still. And I have decided that I will be attending the World Championships again this year. So pretty much as soon as Nationals finished, I got straight into training for Worlds. So Nationals ended and I pretty much straight away got started training for Worlds. Firstly, because there's not actually that much time between the two. The time goes a lot quicker than you think. And secondly, because we had a pretty tight deadline this year with submitting our forms, our uh, technical bonus forms, and our compulsory forms. If you compete at nationals and you place first in your category in the elite divisions, or if you place second with a high enough qualifying score, you will get an invitation to compete at the world championships. Now, this invitation can arrive anywhere from a couple of days after the national championships to a couple of weeks. But once you receive that invitation in your like Gmail inbox, you have two weeks exactly to accept that invitation or to decline it so that they can invite the reserve athletes in your place. This year, in addition to having to submit your entry, you also had to submit your forms at the same time as you submitted your entry. Usually we get given, a, or in previous years, we have been given a little bit more time. You only had to submit your forms like, I think it's like around two months before the actual competition. So that would have been like, the beginning of September, end of August, maybe, but they've changed it because of um, having issues with the forms last year and things not like getting submitted at the very last minute kind of thing. So they decided that forms would have to be due with your entry now and that you would have to pay a fee if you wanted to resubmit them or change things at a later stage. So I didn't want to do that. So it was basically crunch time. I had like two weeks basically to decide what I was keeping in my routine and what I was changing if I wanted to make any changes to my routine. So I got straight into training on the 8th of May and for two weeks it was basically just like trying to figure out what new choreography I was putting in, what changes I was making and what compulsories I was keeping the same, what compulsories I was changing, what new tech bonuses I wanted to add in. And I have decided that I am changing a couple of my compulsories, a couple of things that I didn't get at nationals that I think by changing them, I have a better chance of getting. And I've also added in some new technical bonuses that I am working on. Now, this is the like really intense part because technical bonuses have never really been um, my strong suits. I've got my drops, which I'm quite good at and usually I'm able to maximize and jump ons and jump offs are okay. But anything kind of more advanced than that, I tend to really struggle with and I have not been really able to incorporate many of the higher scoring technical bonuses into my routines up until now. But this year I've decided is a year of challenging myself. I've got some really like difficult things that I want to put in my routines and that I want to improve in terms of my pole and my um, pole sports in particular. So I've decided to add in some of these new technical bonuses. And the nice thing about these technical bonuses is that I have written them on my form. I don't get any deductions if I don't actually manage to do them on the day. It's not like a compulsory where if you miss it, you get like a minus three. So I've kind of gone for the moon with um, 
these technical bonuses and hoping that if I don't make it to the moon, I'll at least land on the stars, you know? Is that the way the saying goes? Anyway, but yeah, so I've added in all these technical bonuses, um, trying to work on some acrobatic catches, maybe a floor-based contact flip if I can manage that, and also just improving some of the uh, dynamic combos that I have in the routine, seeing if I can add in a couple of more of those. So that was basically my first two weeks of training was sitting with my coach, trying to figure all this out, retyping out my forms, getting those ready to submit and figuring out what I wanted to place, where, what things I'm moving, what things I'm changing. And that took us all the way up to probably around the like 21st of May, those two weeks. Our invitations, I can't remember exactly when they got sent out, but it wasn't like the day after the competition. So we had a little bit more than two weeks, but um, we didn't know when the invitations were coming, like they could come at any point. So I was like basically ready to go from like two weeks after the nationals because I wanted to have everything ready um, just in case, you know, the invitations had come a little bit earlier. After re-choreographing my routine, figuring out which tech bonuses I was adding in, which compulsories I was keeping, which compulsories I was changing, new ones I was adding in, um, my main focus during this period has then been on strengthening and conditioning and trying to improve my stamina so that I can actually achieve these tech bonuses and compulsories. So for the past nine weeks, pretty much um, strength and conditioning work has been like the main focus of what I've been doing. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my schedule looked like for those nine weeks. I'm actually about to change this slightly going into my like new phase of training. But up until now, this is kind of what I have been doing. Firstly, every morning I start off with some mobilization. Um, this is really, really important to me, especially I find with my injury, my muscles can tend to get like really uh, stiff and go into spasm quite quickly and quite easily. So making sure that I'm continually mobilizing my muscles and making sure that I'm like moving through my range of motion and keeping everything kind of liquid and moving is really, really important for me. So every morning for about 10 to 15 minutes, I first start off with a little bit of a meditation and then I do some like mobilization for my neck, my back, um, and I throw in a couple of physio exercises that um, are like the most important ones that I'm working at at the moment, just like one or two to try and kind of keep my body in working order. And I find that if I don't do this, I can get really stiff and my body just doesn't cooperate with. Then in terms of the rest of my schedule, I break it up by days of the week. So on a Monday, I do a strengthening workout, which is focused on pull and abs. So it's a lot of focus on pull-ups, leg raises, rows, um, those sorts of exercises to really increase my pull-up strength, which has been working a lot. I've seen a huge, huge improvement in my pull-ups since I've started doing this conditioning training. I like still can't quite do a pull-up but I used to be like nowhere near doing a pull-up whereas now I can actually go from like standing with a slight bend in my arms and in chin-up grip pull myself all the way up to the top uh chin over bar which is amazing that's not, never something that I was able to do before and I'm working and getting close to being able to do a like full pull-up chin-up from all the way a dead hang so that has really really um been improving a lot and I'm really happy to see the progress. It's really motivating me to also like keep with the strength and conditioning workouts because they can be a little bit tough sometimes, not gonna lie, but seeing the progress really helps like motivate me. And I'm also seeing the progress translating into my pole and feeling stronger in my pole moves as well, which is really nice. But now I've gotten off track. So Monday, pull workout. This usually takes me between like 40 to 45 minutes, including my warm up, which I always do like three to four minutes of skipping before I start my strength workout. And then in the afternoons on the Monday, on a Monday, I usually try and do a little bit of upper body stretching. So this is really focused on like active flexibility, um, really trying to open the shoulders um, and the back as well. So make sure that my shoulders, my overhead range of motion and um, all that is good. And then that my back bend is going to be fine. Then on a Tuesday, Tuesday is a pole day and I will warm up for pole by doing some physio exercises. So it's things like um, shoulder work with the therabands, like external rotation and that. And then things like 
clams, um, a little bit of core activation and some core work as well. And then after I've done like all of those physio exercises as part of my warm up, I will then get onto the pole. And for the past nine weeks, this pole training has been really focused on a lot of kind of like conditioning moves and um, really just drilling and training the technical bonuses that I am trying to work on. So the acrobatic catch, the floor base contact flip that I'm working on, and then also um, the compulsories, my most difficult compulsories. So things like my shoulder mount deadlift, which I'm still working on, and um, my handspring straddle, which is coming along quite quite nicely. But that's what I'll do on a Tuesday is just kind of like repeat that over and over and over again. Um, until I am exhausted, basically. Then on a Wednesday is another strength workout. This time it's a push and legs workout. So this is also an early morning workout. Um, get it done before I get to work for the day. And this is mostly focused on like squats, lunges, and a lot of push-ups, like a lot of push-ups. Um, I haven't seen as much progress with my push-ups as I have with my pull-ups, but we're getting there slowly and like, you know, Small progress is still progress and we celebrate it all. So I'm still happy with it. And um, definitely again, the strength in terms of like how it's translating to my pole work is definitely improving as well. And like I can see it reflected there. So that's still good. And then on a Wednesday evening, I have been doing some classes at um, the Cirque, some aerial training, um, acrobatics sometimes, movement, which is like a dance class, but that's not like directly related to my world training. Thursday in terms of world's training, pole training is a pretty light day for me because I have been doing an aerial training program class at the Cirque on a Thursday evening and that does take quite a bit of energy so I keep the rest of my day pretty light and also I'm doing a lot during the rest of the week so Thursday is more a day for like aerial and not so much pole. Then Friday is pretty much the same as Tuesday. I'll do pole and I'll warm up with physio exercises and again focus a lot on conditioning and just training and drilling those um, tech bonuses and compulsories over and over. And then finally Saturday is um, the big day. Saturday is our main competition training day. So at my studio pole playground where I train at with my coach Daniela, we have a whole group, a whole team of people that all train together on a Saturday morning for competitions. Some of us are going to Worlds and some of us are training for other competitions, but we'll all train together. And during this session, it's mostly focused on trying to run short combos um, or poles with the music and trying to build our way up to half runs and eventually um, full runs. Um, which we're not quite there yet with the full runs. Full runs are going to start in this next phase of training. So kind of the first two weeks while we were still focusing on like what we were changing, it was kind of running that to see if those changes would work and running small sections. And then um, from pretty much about week three, we've been trying to do half runs. We will run the entire um, static portion of my routine and then run the entire spinning portion of my routine after a little bit of a break in between with the music um, and trying to build up stamina and endurance in that way. And then on a Saturday, after we've run our routines or run our sections of our routines, we always, always, always do conditioning. This conditioning is a killer. So Daniela, my coach, will come up with a selection of different exercises that we have to do. And it'll be a mixture of on the pole exercises and off the pole exercises. And we'll have to do all of those. And then we'll have to do four minutes of cardio. So uh, jumping and bouncing and skipping. Um, and then we repeat that for the past nine weeks. We've been doing two rounds of conditioning after every training. And this is only going to increase as we move on and into our next phase of training. But that is next week's problem. And then Sunday is my rest day. So I try and not to do, ever do anything on a Sunday because that is my one day of the week where I actually do nothing in terms of like exercise or fitness wise. So it's my day for resting, recovering and getting ready to do it all over again the next week. And that is my entire um, schedule or what has been my schedule for the past nine weeks pretty much um, in this whole like first phase of my training. Um, I'm not gonna lie and say that it's always 100% consistent. Like there have been days where I've missed, like I've actually struggled a bit with getting sick a couple of times in this first like training phase, especially with the change of season in South Africa. We go, we've like gone from summer into winter, 
now and um, it seems like everyone's just getting sick all the time so I've missed a couple of things because of being sick and I've also been away um, for like a weekend here and there so I haven't been 100% the most consistent um, but that is something that I definitely want to try and improve on for this next phase of my training is being a little bit more diligent and a little bit more consistent which only becomes more and more important as we get closer and closer to worlds but um I've still made a lot of progress in this first phase of my training. Like I've said, focusing on strengthening and conditioning has really helped a lot with how um, strong I feel in my actual pole tricks. I'm feeling a lot more confident in some of my moves, particularly my handspring straddle, I feel has come quite a long way um, since I first started training that even before nationals and then getting it by nationals and now it's just improving even more as I train more and more for worlds. My aerial shoulder mount as well, um, there's still a long way to go to improve that and I'm not sure if I'll get it to code of point standards by the time that Worlds comes around in October, but there definitely has been some improvements there as well. The tech bonuses as well have been coming on quite nicely. Um, I'm really, really happy with my acrobatic catch in particular. This is something that like has been a goal of mine since I remember back in 2019 when I was busy training for my first ever Worlds. It was something that I considered of like, oh, I would love to put an acrobatic catch in my routine. And I kind of started playing with the idea of maybe um, training it a bit, but it just wasn't happening at that stage. And I kind of gave up on it a little bit for that world. Um, but it's still been kind of in the back of my mind that this is something that I want to do and something that I want to achieve. So I'm really, really happy that I'm like actually making such good progress with it now. And I feel like I'm at the point where even if I don't get it quite to the point where I'll actually get the points for it and it'll actually count as a technical bonus because you have to get quite a big release for the judges to actually be able to see that it's a release. But even if it doesn't get to that stage, I'm so happy with it like as like and the progress that I've made with it that it'll definitely stay in the routine regardless. And I'm really, really happy about that because it's not looking like a complete mess. The other technical bonus that is not quite as great as the acrobatic catch yet is my floor based contact flip. So this is something that like is a real like reach for me, but I love to challenge myself. So we put it in there anyway, it's written down and we'll see if I manage to get it. But um, I am making some progress with it. At least I feel like it has slightly improved. Um, I can do it with a spot when my coach is spotting me, like it's okay, but um, doing it by myself is a whole other story. Um, and at the moment I'm kind of still working on breaking it up into it, the different phases of the movement, but that is getting better. And um, I can still possibly put it in the routine um, if I work on it some more between now and October. So yeah, that is how my training is going so far. Um, I thought it would be nice to just kind of make this little update. So also so that I can look back on it and see kind of what I was doing at this stage in my life. Um, and also like, you know, give you guys a little bit of an insight into what it's like to train for a competition like Worlds. Like I said, now that the first nine weeks of training are up, we move into a new phase of our training. Um, and now, we're at the stage where I have to be doing like full runs of my routine. Obviously it's not perfect yet um, and it never will be perfect. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's still in the very, very early stages where things are still not looking great, but we're gonna push through anyway and still try and do these full runs of the routine in practice on Saturdays. Things are gonna change up a little bit with my training schedule now as we focus more on like really trying to improve the routine as a routine and not focus on the individual elements so much because it's one thing to be able to do the element individually by itself it's a completely different story to be able to do it in the routine so that's what we're working on now is making sure that i can do everything actually in the routine not just separately by itself but i will make another one of these videos and update you guys more towards the end as we get closer to worlds on how this next 
phase of the training goes. Thanks so much for watching and letting me tell you a little bit about how my training has been going so far. Let me know if you want to see more of these types of videos in the future. Like I said, I'm going to make another one on my second phase of training, but if there's anything else in particular you want to see relating to how I get prepped and ready for Worlds, then feel free to let me know. You can also follow me on Instagram for more regular consistent updates on my training. Um, I'm going to try and be like consistent about posting there about like how my training is going probably on like a week to week, month to month basis um, over there. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.